Hi, creative friends. Today I'm sharing how to update this $20 thrift dresser with just one color. Yep, one color and no fancy tools required. This is a fabulous build your confidence project. Great for any beginner, but it's also perfect for us seasoned furniture painters as well, because this will demonstrate just how gorgeous a piece of furniture can look with just one color and a change of hardware. So just let me get set up and I'll be right back. Let's start. Here's the fun part. <laughs> Here's the $20 laminate thrift dresser I started with. I got it from some sort of thrift store. I don't even remember where because it's been in my inventory for some time. But it does have a really cute shape and I do love the little legs. I started by removing all the original hardware from the drawers and giving the entire dresser inside and out a really good cleaning with white lightning, which is a TSP substitute. To fill in the hardware holes and the divots that this dresser had, I mixed up some Bondo. I took about a golf ball sized uh, amount of Bondo and added in about a pea sized amount of hardener. And once the two are mixed together really well, you have about 10 minutes to, or maybe not even, you have about five minutes to, <laughs> to work with this Bondo, but it is super strong. I always buy the all-purpose putty Bondo. Uh, they do have a wood filler Bondo as well, but the only difference I've noticed between those two is the price point. The all-purpose is less expensive, and I find it works just as well. I have a full tutorial on how to use Bondo for furniture repairs, which I'll include in the cards above, and I'll also include in the description down below. I'm just using a plastic putty knife to fill in the hardware holes with the Bondo. You can also use metal um, and about the over the overspill of the Bondo. So obviously when you're filling in the holes, you get a, a lot more Bondo in and around the hole as well. I tried something different this time. Usually I just leave it, let it all dry, and then sand it all down. But Bondo is extremely, it dries extremely hard. So it does require some sanding. Like you'd have a hard time sanding by hand for sure. So what I did was when the Bondo was about half dry, I just used the putty knife and I skimmed it off. Skimmed it off easy peasy and then I primed right over it. Honestly, I'm on the fence whether I like this technique or not. I'll try it a few more times and I'll keep you guys posted. Uh, now for the priming. As you can see, this dresser had, this laminate dresser had a little bit of bubbling and a little uh, repair here and there that needed patching up. There was a scratch on the back. There was bubbling on the front. Um, but uh, BIN shellac or bin shellac base primer is a bonding primer. And you do, technically, you do not need to sand. Uh, this primer sticks to everything. And again, it, it didn't require a sanding. So I went ahead and I primed the top knowing that I was going to sand afterwards to see exactly where I needed to put the wood fill. And I actually really like doing this. I realized the norm is to sand your piece, wood fill, and then prime. But often if I have these little divots that need repairing, it's hard to see until I prime. So I will go at it the opposite way and it works perfect. I will prime. Once the primer is on, I see all the little flaws in the furniture, like the tiniest, tiniest little divots you'll see once it's primed. So once I see all those, I get out the wood fill and I will fill all of them and then I will sand and then I will reprime again. I also have a full tutorial on how to use this BIN bonding shellac base primer, which I'll include in the card above and also in the description below. I also want to mention that I also include all my supplies that I use in the description box below as well. So if by chance you like the color or any of the products I'm using, they will be included.
Once this dresser was completely primed, filled, and sanded, it was time for the paint. And um, I just wanted to mention that as in most every makeover, the prep usually takes longer than the actual painting. That's just the way it goes. You want to prep it really, really nicely so the paint finish looks perfect on it. And speaking of perfect paint, check out this morning sunrise. This is the first time I'm using this color in the silk all-in-one mineral paint. And I have to say, I was smiling the whole time I was using it because this color is just so pretty. It's just a lovely, lovely, I don't know, would you call it like a lavender or a mauve? It's or some people say mauve. I know sometimes I get corrected the way I pronounce my words on the channel. <laughs> uh, but whether it's mauve or mauve or lavender, you know what? It's just beautiful. Um, I applied the paint with my medium oval brush. And I had an email last week asking why I used an oval. And the answer is that they spread the paint really nicely. Um, here you'll see the oval brush and the bristles just spread out and apply the paint beautifully. So it's not like the oval stays in its oval shape. While you're applying the paint and you add a little bit of pressure to it, these bristles fan out and give it a very smooth, lovely finish. They're beautiful brushes to work with. And again, I'll include them down in the description below if you're interested in giving them a try. It'll just be a click away. I also wanted to mention that I used my slap it on technique to paint these beautiful little feet. Um, and it was a lot of fun. You can do that with the oval brush as well. So here you see me slapping it on and this is a great way to apply paint to any sort of oval surface like spindles, legs, armchairs, rounded feet or legs, and it will leave no brush marks. And I have a full tutorial on the no brush marks slap it on technique. And again, I'll include that above and also in the description down below in the related posts. Another little tip I wanted to add was if at all possible, uh, lay your furniture on its back or uh, on its top, just so you can get a different angle and start painting in the crevices that you may have missed when it was standing upright. Uh, if the furniture allows and it's not too heavy, I always get a different vantage point uh, on painting the furniture at a different angle because inevitably you always miss one little centimeter here, one little, you know, little part here, and it's great to be able to get all the angles when you're painting your furniture. It just gives it a much more professional look. So I'm often asked how much of the paint I use for my projects. And for this paint painted dresser, I used a quarter of this 16 ounce jar. So there's plenty left over for another project. And I have to admit, I can't wait to use this color again. Uh, for the top coat protection, there's no top coat required because this silk all-in-one mineral paint has the top coat included. And to finish the dresser off, I replaced the old hardware with these gold flower metal poles that I actually found on Amazon and they're so dainty and pretty. And I think the gold looks absolutely gorgeous with this muted morning sunrise. So before I show you the before and after, here's a quick cost breakdown. I paid $20 for the dresser. I used a quarter of the jar of paint and the paint sells for $25. So let's say $7 in paint. The new hardware from Amazon was $40. And let's say, and this is very much exaggerating, I'd say $5, but let's even just say $10 for primer and other supplies. So the total cost of this new dresser makeover comes to $77. I don't know where else you could pick up a dresser this beautiful for $77. So let's take a look at the before. And here's the after. And I have to say, it's so 
simple, such an easy, simple makeover with huge, stunning results. I don't know why. I just think this dresser is super sweet. I love everything about it, and I can't wait to hear what you think. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, feel free to leave a comment and a like down below. I'm also including bonus quick tip videos every Wednesday. So aside from publishing on Saturdays, the new furniture makeovers, there's quick tips coming out on Wednesday. So please be sure to subscribe and hit that bell so you get all the notifications. You can also follow me over at salvagedinspirations.com where I have over 500 furniture painting tutorials. And of course, I'm also on all the socials. Uh, so until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day and I will see you again on the next project. Take care. Bye, guys.